Everyone must submit himself to governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment upon themselves. For rulers hold no terror to those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what's right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore it's necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of the possible punishment, but also because of conscience. Okay, so a lot of people want to take that passage and say that we have to vote and we have to um, do our part to keep America pure and holy and righteous and on the right track. But there is a problem with Romans 13, okay? And that is that America was born in a rebellion against the King of England. Yeah, it ignored Romans 13 altogether. Either that or the Christians of that time weren't being told that that's what this means. They were being told something else, perhaps. But if we understand Romans 13 to mean that we can't stand up against tyranny, then America was in the wrong. And participating in that, and voting and supporting these leaders that we call politicians today, perpetuates that rebellion. It, it supports it. It gives it credibility, and it gives it power. Another thing that people really don't take note of is Paul is talking specifically of God's servant. He speaks of how this leader that he's speaking of does good and wills the sword for God. If you look at our country, if you look at our politicians, if you look at the history and the fruit, can we really call this a God nation? And I, I've, I think we've already established that in several videos before this. But really ask yourself, do you really feel this is God's nation? No justifications, no rationalizations, just a yes and no. And I think if you're telling yourself yes, then you really have to re-examine what you're thinking because America is clearly not God's nation it spits in the face of the Lord, it spits in the face of God, and it's quite obvious. Now, something interesting I noticed is, and you've got to remember, the Bible did not get written with chapters and verse. These were just simply letters that were written out to various members of you know, the churches and stuff like that. But in Romans 12, if you go back to uh, verses uh, 9 through 20, you'll see how we're supposed to deal with wickedness. And I suppose this would apply even to wicked governments. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people on low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It's mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, when you consider that verse, now when you consider that chapter 13 follows, and is speaking about submitting to basically godly authority. It's exactly right. And when we're faced with evil, we're supposed to do good. When going into an election, particularly this one, this is a great one to demonstrate this, those who are supporting Mitt Romney are doing nothing but trashing the leader. Now we know throughout the Bible it says, don't speak evil of your leaders. Yet the system that people want to uphold as God-given and our right to do and our, our duty to do compels us to speak evil against our leader. 
I wonder if you're honest, my friends out there. Do you pray for Obama on a regular basis? Do you pray that the Lord will open his heart and mind and take him away from his liberal positions that are obviously not of the Lord? Do you pray that he'll step away from his Muslim uh, sympathies? Honestly, I don't believe that most of you do. I believe most of you are praying for him to be cast out of office. And that's the nature of the political beast that is the American government. By nature, we end up speaking evil of our leaders. There's no love in that. And it's why I'm saying we need to step away from it all. We need to let the world be the world. We need not concern ourselves with this, this stuff. Now, for those of you who continually insist, well... God instituted the government, so we have to support it, because it, it's there. God, God instituted it. Yes, God will put many things in place for his own purposes, such as Hitler, such as Stalin, such as Obama. For whatever reason, God had decided he wanted Obama president. And he may ultimately decide he wants Romney to be president. But I would say that is more telling of how God feels about America. I would say that's telling of how much trouble we're actually in due to our rebellion against God. We've kicked him out of schools, we've legalized abortion, we're on the verge of legalizing gay marriage nationally. It's already legal in many states. And we're spending ourselves into endless debt that we'll never be able to repay. But there is something in the Bible that Paul wrote, which... I think we all need to be conscious of. So I'm going to pull that up real quick, and I want to read it to you. If I can spell Ephesians, that is. I'm going to Ephesians 6, if you happen to be following along. Ephesians 6.12 For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Our struggle isn't against flesh and blood. We're not called to military rebellions. We're not called to rejecting the authorities that God put in order. However, we are to struggle against the rulers and the authorities and against the powers of this dark world. And notice that's not just talking about Satan and his demonic forces. And we know this because it's separated with a and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. That could only be talking about Satan and the demons, the fallen angels, if you will. Make no mistake, people. The American government is not and has never been Christian. It was set up to be a secular government. There is in no way any favoritism shown towards Christianity. And that is reflected in the fruit of this nation. Also make no mistake that we are to stand against these dark rulers, these wicked authorities, these powers of the dark world. How are we to stand against them? With goodness, with love. We're to rise above it. How can we do that if we're participating in it? We really can't. I know this ticks a lot of you guys off. I know a lot of you are adamant that it's your duty and your privilege and you're going to do what you're going to do. But for those of you who are out there going, Wow, I really don't have much of a choice this election. It's either Obama, the Muslim, or Mitt Romney, the Mormon, which is a cult. American-born, only been around for, what, 100 or so years, maybe 200 years? I don't even know. I know it wasn't that long. If you find yourself going, there is nobody to vote for, ask God. Does he want you involved in this system? Is this of him? Really, God doesn't need to show you if you're just honest with yourself and look at the history and the facts surrounding all the elections, really. The fruit of this country have exposed it. And if you really want to change it, it's got to come one heart at a time, one soul at a time. We've got to get off our butts and start living the gospel. It's not enough to debate it and argue it and talk about it. 
It's not enough to go to church on Sunday and maybe Wednesday Bible study. We've got to get out there in the real world and start reaching people. Start making a difference by what we're actually doing in life. And stop thinking that we can vote for a candidate who will take care of it for us. I love America. But when I say that, I'm not talking about the government. I'm talking about the people of America. And I believe that if this country is going to ever turn around, it's not going to be legislated. It's not going to be by political powers. It's going to be by the Lord Jesus Christ taking us by the hand and by the heart and taking us to a higher place. Of course, <clears throat> one thing that few people are remembering here is that most of us believe these are the end times. We know that wars and rumors of wars, we know that wickedness is going to rise, the love is going to grow cold, we know that eventually the Antichrist is going to rise and all that jazz is going to happen. Those of you who are fighting for this system may want to consider you might just be enabling that. It's going to happen whether you're there or not. But do you really want to be a willing participant in bringing forth the man who may be the Antichrist or his prophet? Revelation has a point where it says, come out of her. Well, even if this isn't what Revelation was talking about, I would suggest that we come out of her, meaning the American abomination it's time to stand up. It's time to be the soldiers of Christ that we're called to be. And if you know what that means, then you know I'm not talking about rebellion. You know I'm not talking about war. You know I'm not talking about blood and flesh and violence. I'm talking about putting our hearts on the line, loving everyone, and showing them how Christ really is. Well, until next time. Happy Jesus Day, God bless, and peace out.